That's a story that I've been told. Ain't it kind of strange and me? Ain't it kind of funny? Them to tell the story seem to have all the money. Silver lining in the cloud seems to be a little gray right now. And the pot of gold at the rainbow's end, it's a mighty long way around the bay. Waits for me to say We'll walk on golden streets someday That's the by and by But for the here and now Oh, I'd like to see a little glitter somehow Oh, I'd like to get her just a little bit Life is piling up about as high as it can get Just a little bit He was walking by the church on a Sunday morning Listening to the song the children were singing so make sure you're following Broadway on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Then, of course, share with your followers to continue to get out the word of what's going on Resurrection Sunday. Now, obviously, you are not here in church this morning to be able to give your regular offering. True? True, right? And since the bank doesn't accept virtual money, um, we are still depending on you to give. Now, we're not far from getting everything set up so you can give online to Broadway if you choose. But for now, we're asking that you bring your offering to the church. Uh, the office will be open from 9 to 3, Monday through Friday this week. So just drop it off and say a quick howdy while you're here. We'll miss you, of course, and we do miss you, and, and so we want to see you. You can also mail it in if you choose to do that. Our uh, mailing address is 710 East 3rd, Sweetwater, Texas, 79556. And if you have any questions, you can always call the office at 325-235-2730. Okay? So once again, the office will be open from 9 to 3, Monday through Friday this week. If you choose to uh, come on up and give your offering, we would certainly appreciate it as uh, we all know bills still need to be paid and, and uh, our missions, uh, our great missions program continues here at Broadway. Once again, we're glad you're joining us this morning live via Facebook. Next week, we uh, should have the YouTube channel up and running, but for now, we are on Facebook Live and glad that you are joining us. Let's have a word of prayer this morning as we get started. Lord, we love you. We praise you so much for all that you do. We thank you so much for this time together. Lord, it is different, but uh, but I pray it's still a great blessing. And I know, Lord, that uh, you are uh, you are able to meet with us everywhere we are, no matter where we are. And Lord, I believe today that even here in the sanctuary, you can uh, use us to uh, to bring a dynamic uh, time of worship 
to those uh, viewing this morning, not only necessarily even all over our city, maybe all over our state, all over our world. Lord, we're able to uh, to do this now on the internet, and it is uh, quite an amazing invention for this. And we are so thankful that even in this time of uh, uncertainty and, and all of the things that are going on in our world today, and uh, the panic, the fright, Lord, we are still able to worship and to uh, bring some sanity to the insanity. And today I pray that that would be the situation. Lord, I also just pray for our nation, our city, our state. Lord, I pray for the leaders. I pray that they would make good decisions, that they'd be led by you. Lord, we're trusting that they are already and that this is all in your hand. But Lord, we're praying for a quick resolution. We're praying for healing. We're praying for solutions to, uh, to what's going on right now. And we are asking, Lord, again, for you to bring peace in the midst of this great storm, as we've talked about all week on social media. Lord, we just love you. We praise you. We thank you so much for all that you do. And we pray that you would just uh, meet with us today right where we are in a great and a special way. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, what would a Broadway Baptist service be without children's time with Phil? So here goes. All right. Well, we are going to talk about one today, one of my favorite desserts, brownies. And if you're like me, you love brownies, you love to the, the eat brownies, but a lot of times you don't ever think about what actually goes in a brownie. So we're going to kind of take the next few minutes and kind of look at what goes inside when you go and you're making a brownie. First thing, we go and we have some salt. you got to have some salt. And yes, salt is good. It makes things taste better. But you know, if you just sit there and eat salt by itself, it might not be real good. So we're going to go ahead and add some salt. I'm not too sure how much, but we're going to go ahead and add about that much right there. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add some butter. Butter, it tastes pretty good. It tastes pretty good, make things taste better. But you wouldn't want to eat a whole tub of butter. I don't think that would be very good. We do have also some sugar. Sugar, that tastes real good. Mm -hmm. But if you had a whole if you had a whole bowl of sugar, it's probably not good for you though. We're going to add some sugar there. We are also going to add some cocoa powder. Don't let it fool you. It is not chocolate. It does not taste like chocolate. Chocolate. I had made that mistake once before and thought this is a whole thing of chocolate and got a big teaspoon of it, put it in my mouth, and it does not taste anything like chocolate. We're going to go ahead and add some there. Now, we have, we also have an egg. I love eggs, but you wouldn't want to eat a raw egg though. Now, let's see what else we got. Flour. Flour is a good ingredient for brownies. But again, if you were at home wanting a snack, your mom gave you a bowl of flour to eat, still would not be very tasty, would not be very good. Also, we have baking soda. This little one right here, it does not taste anything like soda. Just there. Now, I think we have all of our ingredients. So now we go, we're just going to stir it up. And after you go and you stir it up, you go and you put it in a pan, you go and you put it in an oven, you cook it, and it comes out looking like brownies. You know what? I didn't make these brownies. A little lady named Debbie made these brownies. But you got to ask yourselves, how do something that taste, that you look at the ingredients and you ate them by themselves, they taste so bad, how can you go and mix it all together and it comes out sweet and tasty like a brownie? Well, that's kind of a lot of times like our lives. You know, we have the good things. We have the blessings of God on our life. And those are the good things. But then you also go and you have the, the hard times, like right now. We're not able to go and meet at church together. You're not able to go to school. I know you're really upset about that. 
But you know what? You, you have these good times in our life, and we have these bad times, bad, bad things, hard times in our life. But God says to trust Him in all things. Not just part of the things, but in all things. You know what? So God can take the good, God can take the bad times in our life, and He mixes them together, and it goes to make it make something sweet. We can learn to go and trust God more in our lives. Our love for God could grow. And also, you know, we could go and whenever hard times come up, we just need to remember that this week, that one we'll trust God no matter what. And see, even though things are, are hard, we're going to see how God's going to turn around for good. So we will see you right here back next week. I'm going to go eat some brownies. So I will see you next week. Well, we're thankful today for that remedy, for sure, and so thankful, again, that uh, we are able to get together uh, in real life, in real time, even in days like today. Very thankful for all the effort that's been put in to uh, bring this uh, production to life today, and again, we're so thankful that you are joining us wherever you are. Uh, we're so thankful. Uh, Kim just showed me that uh, we have some friends from Oklahoma joining us today from uh, from years gone by. And, and man, I just want to say hey to my good friend Mark and Philip as they're watching this morning. Man, it's good to good to uh, be able to uh, talk to you guys. I wish we were able to talk back together, but uh, that maybe will happen later. Uh, look, guys, it's a, a wonderful time to be able to uh, share God's Word. It always is a good time to be able to share God's Word. So I invite your attention this morning to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, and we'll begin uh, there in the first few verses in a few moments, but that way you've already got your Bibles handy. And if you want to go ahead and choose, here in a few minutes we'll get over to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter uh, Six as well. Uh, those will be our two texts for this message today. Let's go to the Lord and ask for his blessing on the message. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for uh, all that you do. We thank you for your word that we're able to, uh, to share today. We're thankful for the opportunity that you give us to preach. No matter what the situation and the circumstance, Lord, your word will prevail. And so we are looking to you right now and your word to give us to give us hope, to give us encouragement, but also, Lord, especially now, to give us instruction and correction so that we can walk in paths of righteousness. Lord, we're just lo loving you and thanking you for all that you do today, and we're so thankful to be able to meet together in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen, guys, I believe if nothing else, our current situation here in our city and our state, our nation, has given us opportunity to, if we'll take it, get refocused. For many, unfortunately, focus has shifted to, I'm getting mine, and I don't care who I tromp over in order to get mine, right? Have you seen the toilet paper aisle lately? For others, fortunately, there has been a spirit of giving, of helping, of caring, and especially, maybe most importantly, praying. For each other and others around the world. For most of us, I hope this unprecedented event here in our nation has brought us to some quiet moments with the Lord, seeking His wisdom, His understanding, the understanding that He gives us, His guidance, His forgiveness, His hope, His help. Just like uh, when my mom used to use both of my names. You know, when mom uses both your names, that gets your attention, doesn't it? Well, when my mom said James Daniel, I was like at full attention because I knew that uh, there was something serious coming or I was in serious trouble. Or as uh, my dad used to say, you're in a heap of trouble. But uh, man, I tell you, when, when my mom said James Daniel, I got, I got totally focused on what my mom had to say to me. I believe just like that, God is really trying to get our attention today. For far too long, we've been distracted away from giving God this undivided attention. Now, 
We actually have a little bit more time on our hands, don't we? At least most of us do. My hope is that this time is bringing us closer to God through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If that is not the situation yet, my prayer is that this message will lead us in that direction. We have to know that our faith will lead us to proper focus. If we will go back and lean on our faith, no matter what. We know that our focus needs to be on our Lord for this present day and for the unknown in the days to come. You know, this might just be the tip of the iceberg. We just have no idea. Sure, we hope and pray for the best, but this might be the best right now. And so we are certainly needing faith and trust and hope placed in the Lord. Something that has hit me hard in recent days is how incredibly focused our lives have become on things other than God. When basically everything we are used to doing, used to watching, used to enjoying is taken away, what's left? A recent social media post speaks volumes, and I'd like to read this to you this morning. It says this, in just three short months, just like God did with the plagues of Egypt, God has taken away everything we worship. God said, you want to worship athletes? I'll shut down the stadiums. You want to worship musicians? I'll shut down the civic centers. You want to worship actors? I'll shut down the theaters. You want to worship money? I'll shut down the economy and collapse the stock market. You don't want to go to church and worship me? I will make sure you cannot go to church and worship me. Maybe we don't need a vaccine today. Maybe we do need to take this time of isolation from the distractions of this world and have a personal revival where we focus on the only thing in this world that really matters, and that's Jesus. As you turn to Exodus chapter 20, I want you to look at the very first commandment given to the children of Israel to us today. Exodus 20 and verse 3, you know it. You can quote it right there with me as you're watching. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Hmm. Jesus actually called this the greatest commandment, didn't he? He put it like this in Matthew 22, 37. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Now that sounds pretty focused to me. In order to accomplish this, our focus has to be completely on the Lord. In light of our current situation, and of course the reason we are meeting together via the internet today, we must remember that when God is not the focus, He has ways to bring us back into focus. He does this because the second commandment says this, okay? We're in Exodus 20, verse 4 now, which says, In the second commandment, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. In other words, you cannot make in this world anything to be an idol that you would worship over me. No graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them is what the Bible says. You see, our God loves us so much 
that he did something about our separation caused by our sinfulness. Of course, we know that started all the way back with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And when they sinned, there became a chasm. There became a, uh, a, a gulf between holy God and sinful man. And so God did something about that gulf between us. He did something so that we could have a personal relationship with him that was broken due to our sin. You see, the Bible tells us that he gave his only begotten son because he loved us so much so that whosoever believes in Jesus should not perish, but have everlasting life. In showing us this kind of love and compassion, don't you think that God has a right to say, don't put any other gods before me? Keep your focus wholly and totally on me. It also gives him the right, according to uh, the end of verse 5, to say this. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. We are his purchased, prized possession, bought with the price of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Shouldn't our whole entire complete focus of our lives be on what God has done for us, what God is doing for us, how God is leading us, what God wants us to do with our lives in the temporary time that we are on this earth. And when we step out of that focus, the Bible promises and tells us that God is a jealous God and he deserves today to be jealous because of all the things that he has done for us in showing us this dynamic love through Jesus Christ. He does have the right to be jealous. Doesn't he have the right to be our highest priority, our highest focus? Is it possible that since this has not been the situation of our lives, God is using this unprecedented worldwide experience to get our attention? I'm just asking, is it possible? Is it possible? We must admit that for several generations now, for several decades, as we've birthed children and and uh, now we who are uh, in our middle age have grandchildren and, and, and the generations have kind of, you know, I'm kind of right in the middle of, of a generation gap, I believe. I'm, I'm kind of at the tail end of when, when the church was really booming in the United States of America and, and kind of on the front end of when the, the real collapse of the church began. And when our focus really began to wane on the Lord, when we began to have a less church than more church. And all of these things have, have built up and caused many of our lives to come out of focus. Little by little, we have allowed worldly things to take the place of God in our lives. When this happens, we can expect a visit from God. Continue to look with me in Exodus 20 and verse 5. Right after he says, I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. What does he say next? Visiting the iniquity, that's the sinfulness, the out of focus, not being totally focused on doing God's will and walking by faith, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You see, it's a generational thing. Once we kind of slip our focus out of focus on God, it affects the next generation, doesn't it? It affects what comes along behind us. And, and you know as well as I do that, that what I allow and what my kids see that I allow to come into my life, they're going to take that one step further and then one step further. And guys, we've taken steps so far away from God now that we are so out of focus and out of step from him. And today, maybe in this message, maybe in the circumstance that we are living in and enduring, 
we can find our focus and get back to God. Again, I ask, could what we are experiencing now be a visit from God in the attempt to get our eyes focused on Him? Is it time that we make God our soul focus? If so, watch what happens in Exodus 20 and verse 6. If we'll make God our sole focus, verse 6 says, I will show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Hmm. God will show mercy. That word mercy renders out to kindness. We don't we need a little bit of that in our lives today. We need that mercy. We need that kindness. And so God says, I will show that mercy to those who love him more than anything and anybody else. And also to those who will keep my commandments or do things God's way rather than my way. Or the world's way. When we're willing to do things God's way rather than our way, we are saying that I love God more than I love my way. When we love God enough to do things His way, we are saying that we love God more than we love the world's ways. And we're going to follow Him. And once again, don't you see what's intertwined into all of this? It's the love of God. It's the love of God to give us the commandment to say that he, he is to be our only God, to be our only focus. And then when we make him our only focus, he shows that love right back to us. And we know that he proved his love for us in giving us Jesus Christ to be our savior. And in doing so, he expects then our whole entire life's focus to be on him. And then he adds in there, I am a jealous God. And because I'm a jealous God, if your focus is not wholly and completely on me, I can bring things into your life. And could it be that that's why we are where we are today? I'm just saying, what if? What if? And I know this, that we can certainly utilize this downtime in a way that we can get back focused on the Lord. So as we gather together today, right where we are, God sees you. Just because we're not in the sanctuary this morning, just because we are gathering as Broadway Baptist Church and, and wherever you may be watching this morning and, and whether you're a part of our church or not, just because we are not gathered together in the sanctuary this morning, but you're in your living room, in your car, wherever, you may be actually watching church this morning. Just because we're not all gathered together, I want you to know God sees you. He sees us all. He knows exactly where our focus has been. Today is the day then to be called by his name. If you've never trusted Jesus as your personal savior, it's time to call on his name. If you and I are called by his name, that is you are already a believer in Jesus Christ, it is time to humble ourselves before God. I believe all of this leads us to the day that Solomon was in. The day that the temple was, was uh, dedicated in 2 Chronicles chapter 6. Our day-to-day -day looks somewhat like what Solomon is describing. 2 Chronicles chapter 6 beginning in verse 36. He says this. 
in, in his prayer to God. If they sin against thee, that is, if they, your people, God, sin against thee, for there is no man which sinneth not. That's true for all of us. There is none righteous, no, not one, Romans 3.10 says. So if they, if your people sin against you, for there is no man which sins not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them over before their enemies, and they carry them away captives unto the land. We have done amiss and have dealt wickedly. If they return to thee with all their heart, with all their soul in the land of their captivity, whether they have carried themselves captives, and pray toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, and toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house which I have built for thy name. Then, okay, if they do all of this, turn, refocus their lives back on you. Solomon prays to God and says, Then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Solomon makes this cry and this prayer because he realizes that we are sinful people and we get out of focus. We begin to make other things, other people, other activities, our gods. And we break the first commandment. And we cause God to say, hey, remember this, guys? I'm a jealous God and I demand your total attention. And I deserve it because of what I've done for you. Through giving my son Jesus to you as your, as your Savior. And so Solomon says, if, if, if we wander away, God, but we come back and we earnestly pray. And we earnestly confess what we've done. Solomon says, will you, will you hear from the heavens, God? Will you please hear from the heavens? You see, God actually answered this prayer immediately. When we get to the famous verses that we know in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 12 and following. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, here's your answer. I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Basically, God is saying, look, I can do all those things when you get out of focus to get you back refocused. Then he says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then... Will I, will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land? Oh, we know our land needs healing today. We certainly know about the physical healing that we need today. But we also have to know that we need to undergo a spiritual healing as well. And this is only going to happen if we get our lives back focused solely, wholly, and completely on God. So once again, as we gather together right where we are, God sees us. He knows where our focus has been. Today is the day to be called by his name. To come to know Jesus Christ if you've never believed in him. A simple prayer might say, God, I know I'm a sinner and I believe that Jesus Christ loved me so much that he gave his life for me. I believe him as my savior and I trust him as my Lord and I ask him to forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. Save me. Be called by his name. Be washed in the blood. You be what we call a Christian today. But guys, if you and I who are already called by his name, Christians, 
It is time for us to humble ourselves before God. Don't you agree? It's time for us to seek his face. It's time for us to turn from our wicked ways and trust that God will hear our prayer, forgive our sins, and heal our land. God's promise is that he will have his eyes open, waiting for us to come humbly to him. And he promises that his ears will be attentive to the prayer you make right there in the place where you are right now. So I'm going to lead us in prayer. But since we aren't able to stand and have a formal invitation today, I'm going to ask you that when you finish up watching this live broadcast of our church today, that you would make a quiet space, a quiet moment, that you would reflect, first of all, on your relationship with God. Make sure that you are a believer in Jesus Christ. Then secondly, I, only, I, I pray that you would, you would make a, a soul-searching inventory of where your focus has been. And then that you will, if your focus has been away from God, earnestly ask the Lord to forgive you and bring healing. We need revival today like never before. And it, be, it can begin right where you are right now. And then when we're able to gather back together in a few weeks, we'll just continue to see the fruits that have been started right here today. So I'm going to pray. I've got some closing statements to make before we, we uh, sign off our live broadcast. And then I'm asking you to get alone with God and make some commitments. Review what we've read this morning for yourself and have your own private, personal invitation between you and God. Lord, we just uh, give this message to you. Know, Lord, that it's come from you and I'm just thankful to be the mouthpiece, the person to share it. I pray, Lord, we take very seriously what we have heard and read in your word today. And Lord, begin today to refocus our lives on you wholly and completely. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just a couple of things in closing this morning. Remember that our evening service tonight will be broadcasted live on KXOX 96.7 FM, 12.40 AM. You can also tune in to their uh, KXOX.net, listen live. You'll see it right there when you uh, Google KXOX or just log on to there. You'll see the listen live button. Just click on that and uh, you'll go right to uh, the uh, live broadcast. That starts at six o'clock tonight. And for the uh, safety of our church and community, Again, Wednesday night ministries here at Broadway have been put on hold for uh, this week. But, uh, and then by, by uh, next week, by, by this coming week, the next few days, we're going to have some further details about our exciting Resurrection Sunday. And uh, we'll be expanding our online services to include broad, the Broadway YouTube channel as well uh, this week. And so next week, you'll be able to tune in not only on Facebook Live, but also on the YouTube channel. Listen, guys, I really miss seeing you. Can't say it enough. This has been odd to preach to a camera. The camera doesn't amen. But I do miss you guys really, really. And can't wait till this is over and we can gather back together again. I am praying that you have a great and a safe week. And uh, once again, we'll uh, be broadcasting live next week, Facebook Live, YouTube channel. Uh, for our regular Sunday service at 11 o'clock again next Sunday morning. And so uh, uh, just stay safe. And if we see you this week, great. Remember, if you need to bring your, your tithes and offerings by, that you can do that uh, anytime this week, Monday through Friday, our church office will be open 
from 10 until, or excuse me, from 9 until 3. Okay? Have a great, safe week. We love you, and we can't wait to see you again. Have a great day.